Good after, well, good morning. Um, appreciate you guys coming out. Um, here we are again, another first day of fall camp. Uh, just like always, man, there's a lot of excitement here in our building. Uh, I think the way it's a little different this year is the fact that we, uh, every season brings about adversity and times where you need to be resilient. And uh, this group of guys that we, we, we have assembled this year, they, they, they seem to really be ready to embrace all the good and bad that comes with uh, taking on the challenges of a season. So um, that in itself gives you a little bit more excitement than normal. So um, really, really fortunate to be here, really fortunate to, to be going into my sixth year here at Maryland with Coach and uh, with Coach Loxley and, and very grateful for the opportunity. So um, again, very fortunate to coach the young men that I get a chance to coach as well. So uh, with that, I'll open up for questions. Morning, Brian. Dave Preston, WTOP Radio in Washington. With, with Even with the amount of talent you have coming back and the starters you have returning, you, the world doesn't stay you know, in, in, in one place. What do you feel the challenges are for your defense this fall to keep pace with and outpace the other offenses in the Big Ten? Yeah, so you, know, you want your guys that have experience coming back to really show that. You want them to, to take the next step and, and be a different player than they were last year relative to their experience while you kind of bring along the players that are doing it for the first time. We, we got some talented guys in our secondary that, are, that are, hadn't started a game yet. So uh, the guys that have started, they need to lead the way. The speed of the pack is determined by the speed of the leaders. So uh, if there's a challenge, it'll be just, you know, growing the young guys up as well as the older guys really showing that they, that they belong and, and, you know, they've been able to benefit from their experience. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you just look back and you think we still show examples of guys like Ja'Cory and Bennett, Nick Cross, um, you know, Deontay Banks, Tarheeb Still. I mean, those guys were competitive and competed at everything they did from, from day one to, to the time they left. Uh, they really showed the example. And really, a lot of the young guys that are coming up, Perry Fisher, Lionel Whitaker, uh, guys that were around when they were here, you know, they got a chance to see that firsthand. So. Anytime you, you're able to uh, you know, produce guys of that stature, it's a blessing and you know, it, it gives us a chance to, to have a model to show the guys that we have here now. If they put their head down and go to work the way those guys did, then the opportunities are there for them. Hey, Coach. Uh, Michael Stamatos with the Diamondbacks. So Coach Loxley earlier mentioned that this is going to be a defensive-led team this year. Who do you see being the defensive leaders both vocally and with their play style? Yeah, so, you know, when, when when Coach says that, I mean, really what that entails is the fact that we, we have some guys that are, it's their time to lead. They've been in the program um, for a few years now and, and have really made a contribution. And now it's, it's their time to really take the bull by the horn. So guys like Tommy King basode Taze Johnson, Kellen Wide, obviously Dante Trader, Ruben Hippolyte, uh, you know, guys that have, have continued to uh, really be to the forefront of our leadership and uh, they know what it takes to get it done. They're at that stage where they know why it's important to do the little things and um, they're able to, you know, grandfather that in to, to the rest of the team. So uh, we're, we're very fortunate to have those guys leading us in that, in that regard. Wayne Viner, Turp Talk. Uh, you've got a couple of safeties once against a star position for you. Can you talk? Yeah, so I'll start with Glendon first. You know, Glendon has really been a kid that has benefited from being here at Maryland. He's a guy that, you know, he's faced different op obstacles and times where he's needed to be resilient, where, whereas some guys have moved on and, and through the portal or whatnot, but uh, Glenn has stuck it through. He's, he's, you can see his maturity develop on and off the field, uh, and he's definitely one of the guys that we're leaning on in terms in terms of leadership, in terms of playmaking ability, uh, the whole nine. You know, Dante, 
Uh, he, he's been as solid as they come. You know, I am excited for him this go around because if you remember last year, he was coming off the heels of the lacrosse season in which he performed at a high level. Uh, and that's, you know, that's leave one physical sport to go to another to come back to the physical, the most physical sport. So uh, the fact that he gets the opportunity this year to, to really have a, a good summer under his belt to get healthy. Uh, he's, you know, he's the, the old man in the room now, so he's able to coach up the young guys. And, you know, he's the epitome of the speed of the pack is determined by the speed of the leader. We're going to go as he goes and, and we're excited about it. Gary Stein from Press Box at WCBM Radio Baltimore. Um, not that you didn't have powerhouse teams in the conference before, obviously you do, but now you've got four more uh, that come in from the West Coast. Can you just talk about the conversations that you're having with your defense about the offensive challenges that these teams are going to show you? Yeah, you know, the guys, uh, they, they kind of come to me and say, you know, Coach, I was playing against USC last night on the video game. Um, but uh, – you know, it's exciting, man. I, if you're a competitor, you, you want that. You know, you, you want to have to, to deal with the fact that uh, now our competition stretches all the way across to the other end of the country in a new time zone. So, you know, uh, we can't look ahead to opportunities that we have this year, like going out to Oregon. Uh, but definitely there's an excitement there, and, you know, it, it just gives you a little more added push. You know, I'm sure it gives the guys a little more push to do more. Obviously, we have to broaden. Uh, our summer scouting and how we prepare because you know there's going to be a lot there's a lot of newness in terms of what we're dealing with this year so it's exciting and it challenges challenges everybody you know it puts us in an uncomfortable state for a little bit but you know that's also a good thing for you uh, Brian what uh, what sort of growth are you expecting from Ruben Hippolyte and what do, what makes him so special in, in that room on the field for you you know what the, the, probably the biggest area where I see Ruben growing right now is just he's really getting to, uh, you know, kind of express his leadership a little bit more now. You know, he's got younger players under him, whereas, um, you know, he, it were guys around that came in around the same time he did. That's, that's kind of been the deal for him since he's been here. But now he's he is like trader. He's, you know, he's the old man in the room. So him really getting to express his, his leadership qualities and skills, uh, I think it, it, it's a plus for us. Uh, on top of the fact that he's, he's playing a lot faster, he's seeing things a lot better, and he's knowing how and when to utilize his, his speed. He's gotten stronger in the weight room, so he's playing with more power. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like a cheat code to have him right now for us, so we're very fortunate. Yeah, you know, you, you, you have to really, it starts in recruiting. You, you know, you really have to do a really thorough evaluation of, of, of who you're looking at. If, if you're going to ask kids to come to your campus and play man coverage against the likes of Marvin Harrison Jr., players like that of that stature, you know, you, they got to have a short memory. And you watch them in high school play against really good competition. And uh, you, you, you want to see how they respond in those moments where they need to be resilient, where they need to bounce back because uh, they can make a wrong move, a wrong, uh, you know, action one way and it shows up, you know, in six points on the board. So uh, definitely having guys that, that uh, have the ability to bounce back in those scenarios along with obviously a talent, but you want, you know, there's a difference and you, you want to find that out really early in recruiting uh, before you you know, commit to someone in that position, in my opinion. Coach, can you talk about Phillips and then Johnson and the guys who really play the nose and anchor that line? And what's the ceiling for Jordan Phillips? Um, you know, Jordan is, he's special. His, his work ethic, uh, you know, his will to play hard, his will to, to be there for his teammates is, is unique. So a guy like that, there is no ceiling in my opinion. I think he can go as far as he wants to go as long as his mind and body will allow him to, 
to be at this pace. Um, you know, a guy like Taze Johnson, you know, Taze Johnson for us last year played all across the front. You know, he was kind of the guy that, you know, spelled guys, but, you know, he played a lot because he, he spelled guys at different positions. He played DN for us, he played the three technique, uh, he played the zero, and he's really our best interior pass rusher. So he created a lot of gaps and opportunities for our, some guys like Donnell Brown, Kellen White, Jay Sean Barham last year to rush the passer through him being penetrating gaps and, and really opening up lanes. So he's also a selfish player as well. Selfless player, excuse me. So, uh, you know, his leadership, Jordan's leadership, even though they're unique in how they do it, uh, they're guys that uh, we, we feel confident going into any stadium and lining up and, and being stout. You know, Quayshawn is he. Quayshawn is the type of guy, man. When the, the the larger the stage, the bigger the lights, the more he'll show up, and the more he'll turn around and, and make a play. We watched, you know, we took clips from last season where we we wanted to show some effort plays, and you know, a big play in the Michigan State game on the road last year when he kind of tackled the quarterback, dove for him, and, and made the play on the one yard line, and we eventually, through that series, got a goal line stand, which really gave us a chance to kind of get some separation, which as, you, as the game went on, we needed it. But those plays like that and those situations is when he raises his level and rises to the occasion. So uh, looking for him to be more consistent with his fundamentals and technique and, and being able to match his, his athleticism and talent, but uh, really expect a lot of big things out of Quayshawn this year. Hey, back here, uh, Mike Rivetto with uh, staff writer for Maryland Athletics. Um, going off of the question about uh, Jordan Phillips, just how have you seen you know, his mindset, you know, how he just approaches things, kind of rub off on other people? I feel like having a guy like that in your program you know, really starts to change culture and have you know, a lot of other people like him approach you know, the game of football, the game of life, even mm -hmm. the way he does. Yeah, he, he's, Jordan has come in and earned it. You know? um, a guy coming in out of the portal from another school, his first actions here was to find out the little things that we did around here that made us who we are. He wanted to indoctrinate himself in what we were already doing. Uh, so he didn't come in with any type of, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's, he didn't come in expecting anything, if you will. He came in really, really coming in to buy in. And I think, you know, early on, obviously his unique way of working and approaching his work uh, was a little different for some guys. But as time has gone on, people see that he's, guys see that he's real about what he's doing. He believes in it. And, um, you know, he's earned the, the respect of his teammates. And um, he'll earn the respect of his opponents as well. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. We're going to head down to the second floor. Clay.